Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi, and this lecture pertains to the Porphyrius chapter of Hematology and Transfusion Medicine Board Review Made Simple. <clears throat> the porphyrias are metabolic disorders characterized by defects in heme biosynthesis pathway. Most forms of porphyria in which there is overproduction of porphyrins have one clinical feature in common, sensitivity of the skin to sunlight. The nature of the lesions produced differ between diseases. The photosensitivity is due to the photodynamic action of the porphyrins that accumulate in the skin when the plasma of porphyrin concentration is increased. The other main clinical feature of the porphyrias, neurological lesions, typically causing severe abdominal pain, peripheral neuropathy, and often mental disturbances, which are frequently precipitated by drugs such as barbiturates or smoking, are associated with increased excretion of the porphyrin precursors porphyrinogen (PBG) and 5-aminolevulonic acid (ALA). <clears throat> those neurologic issues do not occur in those forms of porphyria in which excretion of these precursors is always normal. The neurotoxicity seen in porphyria is thought to be due to the accumulation of ALA, which interacts with GABA nerve endings. Clinical presentation will depend on which porphyrin intermediate accumulates. Genetic mutations coupled with environmental triggers cause the clinical presentations. Excess porphyrin metabolites are secreted in either the urine or feces, which can be measured. Specimens are best collected during acute exasperations with minimal light exposure to the collected specimen. Typically need levels five times normal for the diagnosis. Any external factor which causes increased heme synthesis will lead to acute exasperations. That is why dextrose is, admi is administered during any acute episodes, as it decreases heme synthesis. <clears throat> there are eight enzymes involved in the biosynthesis of heme from glycine and succinyl CoA. First enzyme, aminolevulonic acid synthase, metabolizes the formation of aminolevulonic acid. Second enzyme, porphyrinogen synthase, catalyzes the formation of porphyrinogen. Third enzyme, hydroxybalane synthase, catalyzes the formation of hydroxybalane. Fourth enzyme, uroporphyrinogen 3 synthase, catalyzes the formation of uroporphyrinogen 3. Next enzyme, uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, catalyzes the formation of coproporphyrinogen 3. Next enzyme, coproporphyrinogen oxidase, catalyzes the formation of protoporphyrinogen 9. Next enzyme, protoporphyrinogen oxidase, catalyzes the formation of protoporphyrin. And finally, the last enzyme catalyzes the formation of heme, and this enzyme is called ferroketolase. <clears throat> Deficit in the first enzyme will cause X-linked cerebroblastic anemia. Next enzyme, plumboporphyria. Deficiency in hydroxymylane synthase will cause acute intermittent porphyria, and I highly suggest that you know that for the boards. Deficiency in uroporphyrin 3 synthase will cause, will cause congenital erythroporphyria. This enzyme is very important. Uroporphyrin decarboxylase, called urod, deficiency of this will cause porphyrinic cutaneous tarda. Next enzyme, corporoporphyrinogen oxidase deficiency will cause hereditary corporoporphyria. The deficiency of protoporphyrinogen oxidase will cause very good porphyria, and this I highly suggest you know for the boards as well. Deficiency of ferroketolase will cause erythropoietic protoporphyria. Acute intermittent porphyria, AIP, case report. 27-year-old female presenting with unexplained recurrent abdominal pain constipation, nausea and vomiting due to autonomic dysfunction, and hyponatremia due to SIDH. Has had multiple negative CT scans of the abdomen and EGDs, recently was initiated on birth control pills. She also has a history of depression and bipolar disorder. <clears throat> These are two, usually the neuropsychiatric issues which get misdiagnosed as bipolar disorder. All previous workup negative. Her urine has port wine color due to elevated ALA and PBG levels, but it's usually normal in color. AIP is due to genetic mutation of PBG deaminase gene, which causes a deficiency of hydroxymethylene synthase. <clears throat> Diagnosis is via 24-hour urine ALA and PBG collected during an acute crisis. Red blood cell PBG deaminase activity of less than 50% is important for confirmation of diagnosis and may identify carriers of AIP. 
stress smoking exacerbates the disease. And it rarely presents before puberty, therefore gonadal hormones are thought to play a role. <clears throat> Certain medicines which induce ALA synthase activity may also exacerbate the disease, including alcohol, oral contraceptives, sulfonamides, and anticonvulsants. The peripheral neuropathy may progress to respiratory paralysis and mechanical ventilation. They may develop hyponatremia due to SIDH and dehydration. Patients exhibit varying degrees of neuropsychiatric symptoms and are emotionally labile. Oftentimes they get misdiagnosed. There's no skin involvement. An increased risk of hepatomas, so check alpha beta protein yearly. <clears throat> Multiple attacks may lead to hypertension and renal failure. The AIP treatment, if acute abdominal pain, no visceral crisis, then treat with caloric loading, dextrose, 500 grams daily. Pain control and discontinuation of medicines that exacerbate the problem, for instance, oral contraceptives. Hemin, panhematin in US and heme arginine in Europe are indicated in acute respiratory or neurologic decompensation, but not with uncomplicated neurovisceral pain. Hemin is formed when heme is associated from this apro protein and can inhibit ALA synthetase and hence decrease porphyrin production. Doses 4 mg per kilogram once daily for 4 days, but monitor for renal failure and DIC. Correction of dehydration and hyponatremia are very important either with mild or severe attack. Consider pain control with narcotics and prevent future attacks by withdrawing the offending factor which is either smoking, alcohol, stress, etc. <clears throat> Very good porphyria. Case report. 30-year-old South African female of Dutch ancestry, the key word is Dutch, remember this, presenting with blistering skin lesions, psychiatric issues, and chronic abdominal pain. The big difference with this and porphyria cutaneous tarda is that porphyria cutaneous tarda will not have any neurobristal issues. So if you see Dutch ancestry, psychiatric issues, and skin lesions, think very good porphyria. Patients with Dutch heritage, again with neurovisceral symptoms and blistering skin lesions, have very good porphyria. This is due to deficiency of protoporphyrinogen oxidase. One take home I would suggest knowing is collect fecal protoporphyrins or urine ALA and PBG to confirm the diagnosis. Keywords to know again, variegate porphyria, Dutch ancestry, psychiatric issues, and fecal protoporphyrins. Hereditary coproporphyria is much less common and is due to deficiency of coproporphyrinogen oxidase activity. <clears throat> ALA dehydrotase deficiency is the least common porphyria. We'll have elevated ALA in urine but not PBG. The reason why it's important is lead will also inhibit ALA dehydratase. That is why the patient develops unexplained abdominal pain and neuropathy with lead poisoning. This may be reversed with zinc. The general diagnostic algorithm, if suspect porphyria, check urine porphyrin screen. If negative, then stop. If positive, check 24-hour urine for ALA and PBG. If normal or mildly elevated, then unlikely. If 24-hour urine levels are five times normal, then most likely have acute porphyria. Next, check 24-hour stool studies for coporphyrinogen and protoporphyrin. If normal, the diagnosis is acute intermittent porphyria. If fecal protoporphyrins are abnormal, diagnosis is very good porphyria. If fecal coporphyrins are elevated, diagnosis is hereditary coporphyria. Porphyria cutinia tarda, case report. 50-year-old man with blistering skin lesions in hands and sun-exposed areas. Sunscreen does not help in preventing the lesions. Keyword, no abdominal pain. HIV negative and keyword hepatitis C positive. Your porphyrins are phototoxic when exposed to sunlight and disrupt the dermal epidermal junction causing blistering skin lesions. It's associated with your porphyrinogen 3 decarboxylase deficiency, called urod. Keywords again, porphyria cutinia tarda, skin lesions, no abdominal pain, hepatitis C, and urod deficiency. It's associated with increased iron retention. 
Patients may actually be asymptomatic until the patient contracts hepatitis C. It's also increased risk for hepatomas due to increased iron accumulations in the liver. They will not, again, they will not exhibit neurovisceral symptoms, unlike variegated porphyria. Diagnosis is via checking urine, uroporphyrin levels. <clears throat> Treatment, removal of iron through phlebotomy induces remissions. Continue phlebotomy until ferritin is less than 50. Iron chelation if phlebotomy cannot be tolerated. <clears throat> the patient has hepatitis C, consider treating it. Remove any precipitating factors. Avoid excessive sun exposure and use sunscreen containing zinc oxide. Consider liver transplantation if patient develops hepatocellular carcinoma. <clears throat> Congenital erythropoietic porphyria, Gunther's disease, case report. Eight-year-old male with short stature, fractures of his thoracic vertebrae, and severe mutilating photodermatitis with necrosis of hands and feet. Has brown teeth due to high porphyrin content, and is anemic with splenomegaly due to ineffective erythropoiesis. Again, this is very rare due to deficiency of uroporphyrin three synthase. Will have very large excretion of uroporphyrin one levels. In the treatment, consider allogenic stem cell transplant and blood transfusions is needed. <clears throat> Erythropoietic protoporphyria, case report. 15-year-old male with marked photosensitivity of sun exposed areas and painful burning of the skin. Patient exhibits chronic skin scarring and multiple family members with the same problem. The defect in furoketolase, the very last enzyme in the pathway, causes this. Patients develop massive accumulation of protoporphyrin in plasma and feces. The treatment, avoid sun, use sunscreen, and aloe transplant may be consideration. This concludes the porphyria chapter. Thank you.